You're probably watching this video if you're in the market for the Google Pixel 3 and you're doing some research, or you already have the Google Pixel 3 and you want to know what settings you should change in it. Today, I'm going to show you my tips and tricks, the settings that I use on my Google Pixel 3 to make it even more awesome. Check this out. Hey, welcome to another Talking Tech with a Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make technology simple. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing. If you're into phones, gadgets, apps, tips and tricks, we all do it here on this channel. Hit that subscribe button down here. And a big shout out to my friends over at Verizon who sent me the Pixel 3 for this review. Always got cool stuff. Link will be in the description below. Go and check these guys out. And let's get on to today's show. Okay, so let's start off with something unexpected, which is in fact the headphones that are included in the Pixel 3 box. Now, the reason I want to look at those is because when you connect it, you'll see that it goes through a little bit of a setup wizard. And the reason for that is that it does more than simply play back your music or allows you to make voice calls. In fact, it's got a Google Assistant button on it. So when you hold it down, you can actually issue voice commands to Google Assistant, like what's the weather in Dallas today and things like that. Now, taking it a step further, it will even read out your notifications. One of the first things you're going to have to get used to in the Google Pixel 3 is the navigation around the phone. So as you can see at the bottom, there isn't the back button and the recently used app buttons, but there is still this home button. Hold the home button up and swipe it up, and there are all your apps in the app drawer. On the left side, still the back button. Now, let's open up a couple of apps. So let me show you. That's Instagram and that's Twitter. Press the home button, obviously takes you there. But look, if you hold the home button and swipe to the right, it's going to alternate between the last two used applications that you just had open. And the back button, of course, does what a back button does, takes you one step back. And when you simply swipe up, you're going to get your recently used applications and you can simply swipe up like this to just get rid of anything that's actually open. Right, let's take it a step back. Now, if you open up Instagram, for example, press the home button all the way up and it instantly opens up the app drawer. So you can fire up the app drawer from within any applications. If you long hold on the home button, it fire up the Google Assistant and that's pretty handy. As with all Androids, pull down from the top, you get one settings, pull down again, you get more settings. Swipe down with two fingers from the middle, does absolutely nothing, but swipe with two fingers from the top, brings down the second menu straight away. Little gear icon on the side there, and of course you've got the pen, which allows you to customize your top six icons that you can see. Now there's some stuff at the bottom, don't forget that it's new, it's something like called grayscale, so we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. This is another cool little feature that's going to do with music. So go into settings and into sound. And what we're going to do is we're going to enable something called now playing. Now, when you enable that, what it allows you to do is anything that the Google Pixel 3 can listen to in terms of music will actually tell you the title of the song, like Shazam does basically. So here I've got something playing, I can't play it obviously, otherwise we're going to get some uh, strikes against this video. But that's the song that was playing by Taylor Swift. And then it's another one from Panic at the Disco, and it picked it up beautifully. It does take a little bit of time to process, so just be a little bit patient with that. Right, let's go back into the settings again, and this time we're going to go down to say Systems. Click on that, and then tap on Gestures. Now, when Gestures, you've got something called Swipe Fingerprint. Now, I like to enable that, and essentially what that does it allows you to bring down a notification bar from the back using simply your finger scan reader. Okay, let's get back into gestures and this time we're going to play with something called the Active Edge. Click on that. Now what that does, it allows you to squeeze your phone, yes, believe it or not, and it will perform a Google Assistant action or it will put things into silent mode. Now you can set how firmly or lightly you need to squeeze the phone in order for that action to take place. I wouldn't make it too firm or too light because it might go off by accident, but somewhere in between you can practice it until you can see something that suits your type of grip. Right, in gestures, jump to camera is the option we want, and this is the ability to double tap the power button and launch your camera instantly from wherever you happen to be. And back into gestures we go, and this time flip camera. Now flip being the right word, because what it allows you to do is shake your camera and move from rear facing camera to the front facing camera. The reason I say flip is the right word, um, I couldn't get mine to work at all. Could you get yours to work? Let me know in the comments below if yours managed to work and I maybe I'm just doing this incorrectly. And prevent ringing is the final option we're going to look at in the gestures. Pretty cool. Press the power button and the volume up button and it puts everything into vibrate mode. Now, 
I think that's pretty nifty. I just never, ever, ever remember to actually use it. So what I do do is press the volume up or the volume down button and simply tap on the little bell notification like you do when you subscribe to this channel, for example. Okay, back into settings we go and this time we're going to choose battery and we're going to enable something called the battery saver. Now, by default, it will be switched on to 15%. Now, you can set it up to more or you can set it up to less. I like to leave mine at 10%. And essentially what that does, it starts to save your battery as soon as it starts to reach down to 10%. Now, carrying on down on the same settings, you'll see something called the adaptive battery option. Just below that, tap on that. And essentially what that does is that it limits the usage of background applications, therefore saving you battery power. But you must note that notification may be delayed for some of these apps. So if you enable that, be aware that that's what should happen. Right, let's talk about some security. Go into your settings and choose security and locations. And this time we're going to choose the pixel imprint now essentially it's a fingerprint scanner like we've had on multiple phones on the pixel 3 it's at the back it's that round circle thing simply put your finger on it and you probably would have set this up when you set up your phone now i like to set up multiple fingers left hand and right hand so that i could pick up the phone with either hand and unlock it now a cool trick to know which finger is what is simply by just tapping on it and it will tell you that's finger number one and it will tell you that that is finger number two now, yes, you can actually hit on one of those fingers and give it a name, left hand and right hand, but realistically, nobody's going to do that. But if you want to, the option's there. Right, let's get into the settings. Pull down from the top, hit the gear icon and scroll down until you see digital well-being. When you see that, go down to near the bottom, you'll see an option called flip to shh. Now, switch that on, uh, switch that on. And now, what that does is that when you enable it, and you turn your phone upside down it puts your phone into the do not disturb mode so no notifications no phone calls nothing that you set up in your do not disturb okay back in the well-being application this time we're looking for an option called wind down now the idea with this is that it lets your phone get, let you get ready for bed by doing things like dimming your screen changing your phone to grayscale getting rid of all your notifications and reminders and the idea for you to start slowing down because it's nearly bedtime let me show you what that looks like. And I like the idea of the grayscale because they say a grayscale phone is not inviting. So if you have a phone that's in grayscale, you're going to use it as a phone as a tool as opposed to spending lots and lots of hours watching some cool stuff on it. And of course, these are all customizable. The start time, the end time, grayscale, do not disturb. Now, let me enable the grayscale. I'm going to show you what a phone looks like when it's in grayscale. So here is my Instagram account. Nice and colorful. Let's enable Grayscale. You can see everything immediately takes this dull shape. I'm going to open up the same Instagram account and you can see the images are no longer popping off that screen. Back into well-being we go and at the top you're going to have all your apps and how long you've spent on all the apps combined. But you can also drill down to individual levels to say I've spent 10 minutes on my Instagram for example. Now the little icon next to this allows you to set a time limit and the lowest you can go is down to 5 minutes. Essentially, after five minutes, this app will become non-usable until I change the settings again. Cool if you're going to give this thing to your kids, for example. Now, here's what my Instagram looks like after I've used it for five minutes. It says the app is not available. I go back into here, and instead of having five minutes, I say no timer, and now it's usable again. So this one I thought was hidden in quite a weird place. Go into Systems, go into Language and Input, and this time tap on Advanced. And then you'll see something called the autofill service. So you know on your desktop or your other tablets when you use Chrome, it allows you to automatically remember passwords, addresses, payment information, etc. If you enable that here, it will actually bring that information straight across here. So you don't have to retype the passwords and fill in forms again. This time we're going to look for something called display. Let's find that. And we're going to look into something called nightlight. And essentially allows you to set up a schedule when your phone's screen intensity changes, gets rid of that bluish colors, goes into a little bit of an orangey, allowing your eyes to relax. Typically you would do this kind of as the sun goes down until sunrise. Moving along, let's go into adaptive brightness. And if you enable that, essentially your phone sensor will detect how much light is in the room and then change the screen accordingly. Of course, you can overwrite anything by sliding down from the top and playing with these settings as you normally would. Right, still on display, let's go down to advanced and this time let's choose colors. Currently it's set at adaptive 
but you do have the option to change it to a more natural look. So there's something called natural, boosted and adaptive and depending on your personal preference you can set your phone to that. Once that's done, go back into your display, scroll down until you see screensaver. Click on that. And this is like your good old traditional screensaver that you used to get on your computer, which moves a clock around the screen. You can got a couple of little settings that you can play with, but the Pixel 3 doesn't give you too much. It also gives you the option of when you want this thing to start, when it's charging, when it's docked, etc. Let's see what it actually looks like. I'm gonna say start now. And there it is, the clock in the middle, swipe down from the top to activate your lock screen and you can see those notifications. If you leave it, it will go back into your screen saver and essentially prevents the burning of the screen. Now I haven't had burning on the screen in quite a while on many phones, so I'm not sure what this is for, but it must be here for a reason. And we're back under display and advanced and this time we're going to play with the phone's themes, dark theme or light theme. Go down to the bottom where it says device theme, press on that. And by default, it will be set to automatic. Some people have a preference for a dark theme. Swipe down from the top, you can see all my settings have gone to black. Go back to the device theme again, set it to light, and you can see it's come changed back to the default. If there's anything specific you want me to have a look at, let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. Really helps the channel a lot. If you're new here, consider subscribing if this is the kind of things that you're into. Check out some of these other cool videos and I'll see you guys on the next episode because that's Tech Simple. Cheers for now.